Hi everyone, welcome to my review of Sergio Leone's A Fistful of Dollars from 1964. Uh, so yes, we are back once again. Um, yes indeed, uh, we are going through the Dollars Trilogy. Um, so yes, once again, uh, it's been three and a half years um, since I kind of started um, watching these films again. You know, on that on that rewatch, um, you know, uh, back in 2018. And then I, shortly after that, I started um, reviewing these films. And uh, yeah, just, um, you know, had a great time doing that. Um, but this time around, I wanted to kind of um, review them again, and um, there will be spoilers in these films, uh, you know, these reviews, um, so yes, be warned, um, just saying that, you know, if you haven't seen this film and um, the other films as well, um, just on each um, review here, um, you know, it'd be great to, to watch the film first and then come back to this um, discussion, uh, I will not kind of give you um, spoilers um, through this, um, no, 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 um, so yes, just be warned, and uh, from there we can kind of um, talk about the film if you want, and uh, you know, in the, in the comments, and um, you know, get a kind of uh, conversation going, um, so yes, with all that said, uh, let's dig in, and um, once again, um, you know, over a month ago now though, um, but yes, yeah, just um, re-watching this film and uh, having such a great time with this, and uh, have already as well, um, at the time of recording this video, I uh, have already re-watched it for a few dollars more, and um, you know, wow, um, that film, you know, just gets better and better each time, and uh, that was the one that I instantly kind of um, was, you know, completely, um, you know, kind of um, blown away by it, and uh, thought it was, you know, you know, supreme film, uh, you know, just, uh, you know, masterful. Um, this film here, I did love the first time around, um, but, you know, it's definitely as well grown them even more and, uh, you know, to the point of, you know, this is just stunning, this film, uh, it truly is. Um, but, you know, first time seeing this, um, you know, it was very, very special and uh, it was certainly one of the, the milestone films for me, I guess, um, you know, this entire trilogy and especially The Good, The Bad and The Ugly. Um, but for me, you know, I guess, you know, this one being the very first, um, it's very significant uh, for me and uh, my kind of journey uh, cinematically and um, just um, on the channel as well though yes the very first um, film of any director series um, on my channel um, so you know that's kind of um, nice as well you know, nostalgic um, note there and um, you know because you know, I've done the Bond reviews um, but, you know director series um, starting out you know to kind of planning on uh, reviewing um, said director um, going through you know their entire work uh, this was the very very first um you know kind of film that i discussed um so yeah that's great and um once again going through these films um, this time around in more depth and um you know more passionate and just more kind of um covering different um areas that i want to kind of talk about you know um, more clearly i guess and um yeah let's just kind of discuss this film uh, but you know really really special for me um you know kind of i'd seen many many westerns as a kid um but, you know i'd never really seen a spaghetti western and um you know a slightly different um feeling of course and uh, yeah just i'd heard so many things about this um you know as well the, the good bad and the ugly um you know i guess i'd always kind of um been aware of that name you know that kind of title um you know so uh, it was very thrilling for me um to kind of see this um in you know, 2014 i picked up the set um behind me and uh, it was one of the very, very first, um, maybe um, 10 or a bit more than that, you know, kind of Blu-rays that I had uh, in my collection. So yes, yeah, so a very, very small collection at that point. And um, yes, yeah, since it's kind of gradually grown, um, you know, I don't claim to have um, thousands in my collection, uh, you know, at the moment, but, you know, it's, it's certainly a lot more um, now. And um, yeah, it's funny to think that, um, you know, of course, and uh, yeah, just uh, from there as well, I saw many, many different um, films from this trilogy, um, you know, and seeing the rest of his films, uh, Leone, and uh, just being so blown away, and, uh, you know, really, it opened up many, many different, um, you know, I guess, avenues for me, and, um, you know, I was just so blown away, and uh, it was so inspiring to see this film, uh, you know, very low budget, of course, uh, around $200,000, um, do uh, you know, kind of, um, I think, you know, this film and uh, just uh, you know approximately anyway and uh, it's a very very low budget you know for a western and um, you know these big big set pieces of course you know this grand film uh, majestic film and uh, you know these different action set pieces um, but, you know very low budget and uh, it is this kind of um, you could say B grade film uh, but you know it really doesn't kind of feel like that and uh, it's a very unique feeling um, that I get from this uh, which I'll attempt to explain uh, but you know this is kind of this you know I think Leone kind of um, for the most part um, you know maybe not. Um, once I'm trying the West or America, um, but this trilogy, um, you know, it's got kind of like this, you know, this this kind of um, appearing as you know an opera, um, but you know, not quite um, fully going there, um, taking it a different direction, um, you know, as we go through the films. This very unique blend, uh, you know, of this kind of um, you know opera um, combined with um, you know kind of B filmmaking, and uh, you know, I guess just uh, kind of elevating um, the elements, uh, you know, in terms of visuals, um, you know, the way it's shot and um, the acting and just the close-ups, um, the editing as well, and uh, the music um, to such a fine level, um, you know, it really is just this, um, what a trilogy this is, and uh, the way in which Leone made his films, um, you know, it's just like no other, and um, I think just 
of course, many, many filmmakers um, like Tarantino, um, especially, you know, love his films and uh, you know, cannot praise him enough. And, um, you know, I do agree, you know, he's one of the very, very best um, for me personally, um, filmmakers of all time. And, uh, you know, I think despite, you know, not kind of making um, too many films, uh, you know, he made way less than 10, uh, for example, um, in his career. Um, you know, he is one of my favourites um, because of how much I love those films, uh, you know, the top kind of five, uh, you know, of his um, career and uh, especially especially the top three, um, but then, then again, you know, this and, um, you know, another film as well, um, you know, his filmography, um, you know, I absolutely adore and, um, you know, I cannot kind of um, praise this enough as well. Um, it was one of those milestone films, I guess, and just seeing this um, for the first time, uh, I was blown away and I thought, you know, well, this is better than uh, some say, I think, and uh, I was so much kind of um, looking forward to seeing, um, you know, for a few dollars more and uh, The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly, and, uh, you know, I'd seen... I'd seen some, uh, you know, clips here and there of this film, but I'd never seen it all the way through, and, uh, you know, what a film it is, you know, it takes, of course, we must say as well, um, you know, the Yujimbo, um, you know, the film by Kurosawa, um, Yujimbo, is, you know, it's a samurai film, of course, and it has, you know, very similar plots, um, this is uh, essentially, you know, kind of this unofficial uh, remake of Yujimbo, and uh, I've seen that film as well, and, um, yeah, it's a, it's a film that I really enjoyed, um, you know, but I do much prefer, um, personally, a fistful of dollars and uh, I think you know it is even more kind of clear as well uh, you know in its um, storytelling uh, the plot to this film um, you know, some would maybe um, I've heard you know call this film um, you know I can understand that you know kind of uh, convoluted um, the plot uh, but I think for the most part you know um, you know if you pay attention you know it is kind of um, fairly easy to follow uh, it's simply told and uh, it mainly is focusing um, you know this film uh, you know, kind of on the visuals and um, the way in which um, you know, characters are, you know, kind of interacting and, um, I guess, you know, this, this, this score as well, um, kind of telling the story, um, as opposed to, um, actual, you know, dialogue, uh, although there is a plot there that's very much, um, full on at first, and, uh, we have many different things being set up, uh, of course, um, this kind of, this tale of this, uh, individual, uh, of course, the man with no name, um, or, or Joe, um, if you want, uh, in this film, and, uh, you know, he goes into this town, and, uh, these two rival gangs, um, kind of there, um, you know, and, of course, you know, the Rojos and, um, yes, the Baxters, um, led by two individuals in particular um, of each side. And, uh, of course, essentially, you know, our character of uh, the man with the name, uh, you know, he is essentially kind of going in there and uh, deceiving both of them and, uh, you know, kind of playing them off one another. And um, from there we have, of course, you know, just this um, kind of mystery film, uh, you know, the way in which um, the character is portrayed. And uh, we have this kind of, yes, um, this lone character um, forming friendships and uh, rivalries. And um, we have different twists and turns, um, but, you know, mainly this is, um, you know, telling the story, um, you know, through visuals and um, the score and uh, just the editing here is just so good, um, you know, it really is masterful editing, uh, in fact, um, some of the best I've seen and, uh, you know, that really gets better, um, you know, the rest of the trilogy and uh, I just think, you know, this film here is so stunning, um, you know, straight away, um, you know, just reeled into this film, uh, you know, introduced to the characters, uh, the town, uh, of course, the first moments when, you know, we have um, Clint Eastwood, um, him riding through and then kind of taking um, the water as well, um, drinking there from the well, um, you know, just seeing different characters going about, um, you know, a great use of silence here and, uh, you know, mostly just atmosphere here, building and uh, tension and, uh, you know, this mystery um, to this town and uh, what's what is going on here, you know, the characters, um, you know, kind of at first, you know, not, not really saying too much and um, then, of course, he learns more about this town uh, through these different, um, you know, his friends, you know, he makes these friends and, uh, you know, just, um, you know, highly compelling characters. We have Joe Edgar as, um, you know, this character of Piro Pero, and um, we have as well um, Jose Calvo, um, you know, Silver Nito, and uh, these two characters, especially, um, they're just so warm and um, they kind of, you know, they're kind of on his side, I guess, um, Clint Eastwood's side, um, you know, of course, the man with no name, and uh, they do... They kind of give, um, you know, most of the exposition um, first, and uh, from there we have different characters, you know, from the the rival gangs, um, you know, kind of, I guess, giving uh, more information to, um, you know, our protagonist um, throughout the film, and, uh, you know, we have this different way in which um, there are different twists and turns, and, um, you know, first time seeing this, uh, you know, I guess, you know, it's, it's very interesting, um, you know, kind of paying attention to who, you know, um, you know our, our character is kind of um, playing at a certain point in the film and then he kind of switches and, um, you know, it's very intelligent the way it's done. Um, you know, this character is highly intelligent. Um, that's the thing, you know, in this in this trilogy, uh, the man with the name, uh, you know, he's this kind of brutal character, um, ruthless, of course, um, you know, kind of um, this skilled, um, you know, kind of 
gunsman and um, at the same time you know he's really intelligent and uh, patient and uh, you know it's a really it's just a fascinating character and um, you know combining all the different traits that he has and um, the way in which um, Clint Eastwood plays him and uh, the way in which he's edited in these films I guess and, and revealed to us uh, I think easily one of my uh, you know kind of favorite um, 10 protagonists uh, in cinema history and uh, especially in the good bad and the ugly um, you know in this film uh, you know he is just masterful um, the writing here is great and uh, especially though the way in which um, you know he's kind of built up and uh, introduced a legendary character and um, Clint Eastwood um, is giving such a great performance here uh, truly masterful stuff and uh, this is one of the, the early roles uh, for him and uh, you know, he had been in Rawhide um, before this um, that's one of the, the ones of notes uh, of course the TV series um, I've not really seen that um, but you know he's that's what you know we kind of know um, he was in that and uh, from there this trilogy um, really was the thing that launched him um, you know into becoming one of the absolute um, most popular actors um, really of all time and uh, you know, from there he's been in so many different films uh, you know he is truly a legendary um, actor director uh, you know composer as well um, now you know just you know he is just um, truly one of my kind of um, idols and uh, you know seeing this this trilogy here, you know, he is just perfect, um, you know, in this in this role, and uh, I think in this film as well, um, you know, he gives a truly masterful performance, and uh, I really I love the way in which um, you know he just says um, he says things about really speaking at times, uh, the body language, and uh, I think you know it's definitely as well, you know, in the way in which um, you know he's been edited, um, uh, you know, kind of the blocking in this film, uh, that's one of the things which we we'll get to, you know, it's just stunning, and um, you know, it's just really. He aids, you know, in kind of, um, you know, exposing the different traits of the character, um, you know, that we have here, um, this protagonist, um, but yes, you know, the characters in which, um, you know, kind of, um, you know, Clint Eastwood meets, um, you know, it's great to see the kind of friendships he forms and, um, you know, how he kind of, at one point, you know, he's playing off um, the Rojos and then, of course, you know, straight afterwards, you know, he's kind of deceiving, um, you know, the Baxters. We have John Baxter, of course, leading that gang and uh, the rival gang, of course, you could say the main gang of the film, uh, led by Ramon Rojo, and uh, yes, yeah, played by Jean Maria Valente. Um, you know, he is just stunning in this film, and uh, once again, he is in for a few dollars more, and uh, we'll get to that. You know, he plays he plays the villains um, in both of these films, and uh, very very different uh, you know kind of roles here. Um, but you know, both are stunning, and uh, I just love I love the chemistry here, and um, just this kind of menace that he brings to the role, and uh, you know, so kind of you know, kind of um, effective, um, you know, this villain here, and, uh, you know, we have loads of different characters that are kind of, um, you could say, are despicable, uh, but, you know, Ramon is the one that sticks out as this kind of um, presence, uh, even when he's not speaking, uh, he is the one that leaves the, kind of, the impression um, long after the film, and, uh, you know, just this memorable um, performance, uh, of course, from Volante, and, uh, you know, so, so good in this film, and, um, you know, of course, we have this Initial kind of um, mystery though, um, too, of course, um, all the characters, and uh, gradually we learn more and more about the town and um, the history to it, and um, how you know these these characters are kind of um, you know, this rival gang and all the all the friction. Uh, but we have this you know legendary character in the middle of all that, and uh, you know playing off these two different gangs, and um, you know someone who on his own even um, outshines all these different people um, you know, together, this group, you know, these gang members, um, you know, these different rival factions, uh, you know, and it, even they um, all together cannot stop the man with no name, and uh, you know, he literally defeats everyone in the film, and uh, you know, in just an epic fashion, and uh, you know, he is so kind of um, epic in this film. We have initially um, one of the greatest, um, you know, I think Western scenes, and just how it kind of sticks in the mind, uh, you know, it's so iconic, and uh, so, perfect in the way it kind of um, introduces, um, you know, as well, this character um, in terms of, you know, physicality and um, just the way in which he approaches, um, you know, picking off his enemies and uh, that, of course, is the coffin scene and, uh, you know, just everyone, um, I guess, uh, most people have heard of this um, or have, you know, seen it and referenced at some point and, uh, you know, it really is um, just one of the greatest kind of um, character introductions, uh, you know, in terms of action and, uh, you know, I just think um, you can really look at this and see how to kind of develop a character, how to um, you know, leave some things that are missing and uh, just uh, how to kind of put a character in there and uh, you know, just really um, physically uh, develop a character through just a simple um, you know, shootout and uh, it's so masterfully edited and uh, the music of course by Ennio Morricone, um, you know, it's not my favourite um, from him uh, but it's still one of my absolute favourite scores you know, in cinema history, um, so there we have it, you know, it just really is, I think the scores um, as well, you know, Get better and better um, in this trilogy, and uh, that's saying something uh, because this score is wonderful uh, by Morricone, and uh, just the way in which 
I think, you know, the theme is, you know, it's great, uh, it's, it's so great um, to hear this theme, and, you know, the credits um, as well, you know, just epic and so kind of, you know, simple, um, yeah, so effective, and uh, I just love, you know, the credits, of course, um, the titles, and, uh, yeah, but just hearing the score, um, you know, it really is immaculate, and uh, I think it imbues so much kind of um, mystery as well, you know, atmosphere within this, and uh, I think, you know, the actual, um, the harshness, I guess, you know, of this um, world um, that's being created and, um, you know, told to us, um, but of course we have just um, the epic feeling to the score and, uh, you know, the majestic feeling and uh, it really is a heroic um, score as well and, uh, you know, that kind of, it ties into the character, um, the man with no name, uh, you know, he is this fascinating character, um, one of the greatest kind of anti-heroes, um, you know, I guess, and he is this kind of um, hero, um, but, you know, in a very different way, I guess, you know, to what um, many of these different westerns kind of have their, you know, kind of heroes um, portrayed as, you know, just the way in which he comes in and, uh, you know, as well, he doesn't really, um, you know, um, it's very uh, interesting because he doesn't really demand um, to be, um, you know, respected, um, you know, liked or, you know, loved and, um, you know, kind of followed, um, he just is, you know, this character who, kind of just wanders into this town and uh, he does his thing and uh, at the end, you know, all the different characters, you know, um, as we say, the, the characters that, you know, he's made friends with and all this kind of stuff, um, you know, we uh, they have grown to kind of respect him and uh, admire him and, uh, yeah, just even, you know, the kind of uh, the gang members as well, you know, I guess. Ramon at the end, you know, there's that kind of uh, recognition that he kind of um, gives him, um, you could say, without, you know, any dialogue there, um, just the kind of looks, the glances, uh, and just the feeling of that, you know, there is that, even when he's about to die, um, really, um, there is that kind of admiration, I guess, you know, um, uh, and kind of fear, you know, but really there is this kind of recognition, um, you know, of this character and uh, he is just so legendary and uh, I love the way in which um, we have that, we have the kind of way in which, um, you know, he is, um, yeah, kind of loyal as well um, to those he has made friends with and um, he is trying to help these characters out um, while also kind of focusing on, you know, his, you know, his selfish, um, you know, kind of, um, you know, the reasons for, you know, kind of, uh, you know, for example, wanting the money, um, this is all kind of, um, you know, him wanting to do something for himself, um, but, you know, he is not kind of uh, neglecting um, all the different characters uh, along the way, and he is kind of this hero in different places, and, uh, you know, it's just, it's such a kind of complex character, um, I guess, you know, this truly great anti-hero, uh, that's what we say, um, you know, so yeah, you know, it's just kind of, it's great to kind of see this, um, you know, of course, the performance, uh, but also the music, you know, the score um, kind of portrays this, um, you know, this character and his, his traits and um, all that, you know, kind of all the things he stands for, um, really, um, without, you know, the dialogue um, being needed um, to actually explain that, you know, we don't really learn um, throughout this entire trilogy too much about this character, um, you could say as well, and, you know, his his reasoning, um, really, um, I guess we could say um, we learn more about that in The Good, Bad and the Ugly, um, you know, for a few dollars more, um, but certainly this film, um, you know, we have different characters um, coming in and out of the film as well, um, but, you know, especially the protagonist, um, we don't really learn too much about this uh, this character, and I love I love that so much, um, the mystery to him, and uh, the, the sense of the sense of wonder, uh, and, you know, kind of awe, um, I guess, and uh, once again, Clint Eastwood uh, is playing this character um, to perfection, and uh, I love how we have, um, you know, just different moments that are kind of suggested here and there, um, but never really fully revealed and, um, you know, kind of explored, and uh, that's not, you know, a, a slight, it's, it's, it's something that is, um, you know, makes the film even better, and, uh, you know, kind of, I want to know more, but I'm not quite getting it there, you know, um, in this film, and uh, really in the trilogy, um, you know, he is there, and he is just being one of the best characters in film, and uh, we don't really need to know, um, you know, so much, you know, about him, and, uh, you know, he is just, he is just, you know, the character, um, the man with no name, and uh, it's just so legendary, this film, uh, in the way he kind of, um, you know, is playing off the different gangs, and, uh, you know, he is just, um, even they, uh, you know, are kind of no match for him in the end, and, uh, you know, all the all the kind of struggles he goes through, um, you know, he really gets beaten up in this film, uh, you could say, and, uh, you know, just the characters, um, you know, catching him, you know, tying him up and all this kind of stuff, and just really kind of going at him, uh, you know, it's just, uh, it's really inspiring to see how he kind of, um, you know, he essentially uh, at times just shrugs us off and, um, you know, just kind of carries on, and uh, in the end he does triumph, and, um, you know, just the very, uh, you know, kind of, grisly way and uh, you know there's kind of um, the harshness to um, the way in which the villains you know kind of picked off as well and uh, you know, he just kind of um, once again you know he just he shrugs it off you could say and uh, there is no kind of you know in this film uh, emotional connection between him and the villains um, you know he just kind of um, you know he dispatches of them and uh, there is no kind of um, 
I guess, a falseness um, to, to the way in which um, the relationships are played out. And uh, you know, he is just, at the end of the film, you know, he just kills him and uh, he moves on and he doesn't really care. And uh, you know, he just, he leaves and um, the final shot, um, you know, it's just masterful, um, you know, after the duel, especially, you know, seeing um, how, you know, the different characters as well, uh, Silver Nito, you know, and uh, of course as well, um, you know, Pira Pero, um, you know, uh, the, the characters there, you know, kind of um, you know, just disposing of the bodies and uh, going about their business and, you know, carrying on as well. And um, the town goes back to, um, you know, its former self. And, um, you know, at the same time as this, we have um, Clint Eastwood um, kind of going off and, uh, you know, then riding off and um, all in the same shot and, uh, you know, just kind of moving out, you know, of the, of the kind of town here and um, the slight distancing there. And, uh, you know, it's just a really unforgettable film, this, and um, the final act um, to this, um, the jewels, of course, which are so wonderfully shot and um, the way in which we have um, the kind of plot, plot point of you know, the, the armour, uh, of course, um, the plate um, there that's kind of used, you know, Clint Eastwood, um, you know, taking many different shots, uh, you know, of course, but, you know, uh, revealing the, you know, the bullets have not actually um, gone through and uh, then, of course, him fighting back and uh, the whole kind of um, talking on as well, the rifle and the comparison here, um, who will win in the duel, um, you know, Ramon has his viewpoint and uh, we have <laughs> Clint Eastwood's character, you know, of course, from Man No Name, uh, or Joe, um, him saying a different story and uh, him showing, um, you know, truly it means it's about, you know, how you use um, these weapons, um, you know, to come, to come out on top and uh, strategy and uh, the element of surprise and uh, just determination and, uh, you know, the true, you know, pure skill of this character. Um, you know, he is truly a skilled um, gunsman and, uh, you know, he outdoes all these different characters um, you know, just on his own, really, and, uh, you know, he has the aid of, um, you know, a couple of um, characters as we know, um, but really it's him on his own um, kind of playing off these characters using wit, um, intelligence, and, um, you know, just his, his endurance, his determination, and, uh, you know, brute force um, to kind of pick these characters off, and uh, it's just so inspiring, it's so much fun. Um, this film is full of energy, um, you know, it has a couple of moments um, you could consider, um, you know, kind of lulls uh, in the narrative, um, but for the most part, you know, it's pretty much perfect in the way it kind of flows and um, you know I guess there are a couple of moments that you know aren't as good as um, the rest of the film uh, but really for the most part um, you know I absolutely love um, you know pretty much every scene of this film and uh, I think one of the only slights for me um, that kind of stands out you know is has always been the dubbing for me um, you know just a little bit a little bit distracting uh, for me I don't find that you know in the other two um, at all really um, you know I think this film here is the only one um, that kind of has um, this distracting um, dubbing um, that kind of slightly takes me out of, uh, you know, a scene or two. And uh, other than that, but, you know, I absolutely love this film. I think, you know, the cinematography um, to this, um, the way in which we have um, the very fascinating um, kind of juxtaposition of, you know, kind of long shots, um, you know, and the smoke and all these effects. And, um, but, you know, the kind of simplicity as well and um, the restraint of, you know, just kind of, uh, just, you know, bare bones kind of simplicity of shooting this. Um, we have the grain, of course, the grime uh, slapped on here, um, you know, the kind of, the way in which um, we have this kind of, you could say, cheapness to it, you know, the film stock, um, you know, it's this, it's this contrast, um, you know, between the, the kind of operatic nature and, um, you know, how masterfully shot this film is and, uh, and grand and, you know, just sophisticated, I guess, um, um, in the way in which it's shot, um, you know, with this kind of grain, uh, you know, grit, and uh, it's fascinating, uh, and it really is this perfect contrast. Uh, but, you know, the long shots, um, juxtaposed with the kind of close-ups, um, you could say extreme close-ups uh, in this film, uh, you know, it really is, it's fascinating, and um, it's so effective because, of course, we have that kind of, um, I mean, the way in which it's used for intensity, um, you know, to, uh, you know, kind of jewels, and uh, we just simply, at times we have, um, you know, not too many uh, medium shots. Uh, we have long shots um, showing the actual um, general geography of, you know, uh, for example, jaw, and uh, then we straight away have a cut to, um, you know, someone's face, you know, the eyes, the nose, uh, not even the mouth at times, and uh, just that kind of extreme close up, uh, you know, the actual, um, just the pure emotion, you know, the kind of uh, extreme kind of intensity of the characters uh, knowing, uh, you know, uh, you know, at some point, you know, these one of these characters could, uh, could in an instant, you know, kind of um, be dispatched and uh, that kind of fear, um, you know, turning into kind of, you know, this, this kind of brute uh, force, I guess, and, uh, you know, this determination uh, in the characters and, uh, you know, just, I guess this kind of, um, yeah, this fear really plays into that to increase the tension and uh, in this film, you know, the tension mounts and mounts and mounts uh, until it's nearly unbearable and, you know, just, um, of course, then, you know, releasing uh, when we have these kind of um, very instant kind of, um, you know, kind of, uh, 
you know, playoffs to these duels. Um, that's the great thing about duels, um, you know, in this trilogy and uh, many different westerns, uh, spaghetti westerns as well, of course. Specifically, um, you know, it's the way in which we have at times, you know, a massive build up, uh, and it's simply, you know, kind of, you know, uh, geography, you know, of a scene. Uh, it's kind of um, the surroundings and really getting to know uh, the relationship um, of, between different characters, um, you know, physically, the distance uh, between them, and, uh, and then. Of course, you know, it's kind of all this build up and, um, you know, this it's over a second um, after the actual um, the climax, I guess. And uh, there is at times, you know, it's really, um, you know, wonderful kind of restraints of, you know, for example, there could be it could be a duel and there could be uh, a reaction afterwards um, that could be overacting in a film and it could be, you know, really going full on. And, um, it, you know, in this case, though, um, there is none of that, you know, there's no in this trilogy, um, you know, it's just it's so kind of, um, you know, laid back in the way the characters um, are reacting uh, it's just authentic and real and uh, at the same time we do have you know especially as we go on the trilogy um, so much weight of the characters um, uh, you know just there are many emotions and things revealed um, within the jewels um, actually um, you know in Leone's films uh, you know we have um, different examples of that um, but you know it's never overdone uh, that's why I love about this film and uh, you know it's really this this wacky film at times uh, you know we have to shoot out at night you know with the Kind of um, the burning of the house and uh, you know, all this kind of stuff, and many different uh, gunshots and uh, people laughing, and um, that's you know later on in the film, uh, you know around the middle, um, you know kind of leading into the second half of the film. Uh, but of course we have we have that scene. It's kind of this madness uh, feeling we get uh, from this. Uh, but of course it's not even then. It's not you know kind of overdone and it's so effective uh, you know in creating that kind of chaos and um, the kind of headish um, feeling of the film. The characters, um, the expressions in their faces um, at times, you know, it's kind of like a horror film, you could say, um, actually, and uh, it's just done in such a way, and uh, I love how Leone kind of, um, you know, really captures all of the different, um, you know, kind of um, imperfections, you know, on the characters' faces, and uh, this is not, you know, a film that is kind of trying to, um, you know, add glamour to this uh, this genre. Uh, it's, you know, there's nothing wrong with that, um, but of course, this is one that is just kind of uh, very gritty and, uh, you know, revealing all the grease, uh, for example, on the characters' uh, faces, and uh, it really, it puts you in the experience, uh, you know, on this occasion, even, uh, you know, kind of uh, on a, a greater level, uh, more kind of uh, immersive, uh, intimate, I guess, uh, but also more harsh, and uh, it's all these different combinations, uh, you know, and contrasts um, that really make this such a unique film, and, uh, you know, I think just uh, taking this of course, this plot uh, from Yujimbo, and uh, you know, which is a very, very impressive film, uh, but you know, it kind of takes it to another level. And um, you know, I just love uh, you know Morricone's score, um, as I say, to this, uh, you know, the way in which this is edited as well. Um, you know, it's masterful, uh, really genius this one, and uh, just uh, the way this is shot. Um, as I say, um, you know, there's nothing really like this film. Uh, you know, in, in this kind of look, um, other than the rest of the films, um, you know, in the trilogy, and uh, of course. Uh, once upon a time in the west as well um you know it's similar to this uh, i guess you know these films are similar in um the style um although that's a very different film as well uh, but you know this trilogy um, the dollars trilogy um kind of um, releasing um every year you know 64 65 and 66 um so a year apart for each film and uh so much going on here they're getting longer each time more epic and uh, more emotional and uh, more even more grand i feel and uh this is the one that started it and uh you know in itself a stunning film and uh, you know really a legendary experience uh, you know it has humor as well um, I love uh, and just again the subtle use of humor uh, in this film and um, Clint Eastwood uh, you know it's just such you know funny um, you know actor at times um, but you know he never overdoes it you know he's kind of he knows when to kind of um, you know, get this kind of dry sense of humor off and uh, you know just leave it at that and uh, you know it's just great. I just love the structure to this film uh, as well you know the way in which this opens and uh, you know the middle act as well um, there are definitely more twists going on and turns and uh, you know definitely have to pay attention um, to this film and uh, all the different kind of terms and uh, you know I guess uh, the motivations uh, at times uh, you know I guess to some could be um, I could understand if, if some would be um, slightly confused at this film uh, but you know I think it has a wonderful flow um, the structure to this film uh, it's just so stunning and uh, I love you know as well um, just thinking on the visuals um, the actual blocking to this um, especially uh, in the jewels uh, the way in which for example the characters um, you know kind of arranged in the frame and um, the spacing and uh, you know, all the, the props as well of course and the, the wardrobe to this film um, once again very cheap but you know the look of this film and uh, the actual wardrobe the characters um, outfits um, you know just so legendary and um, again you know they have this atmosphere to them um, they're not too 
kind of glossy, um, there is this kind of, um, yeah, all the characters are kind of dirty in that sense, and uh, they have this kind of grit and grime uh, to them, and uh, it just, it adds so much kind of depth and um, just kind of atmosphere, and, uh, you know, I guess realism uh, to this film, uh, but it is this kind of wacky, um, campy film as well, and I just love the combination, and uh, I love how we have um, more of a kind of um, plot progression um, in the middle of the film, and uh, later on in the final act, um, it all kind of comes together, and, uh, you know, once again, it kind of relies on the action and um, you know, the characters' relationships and uh, how it all kind of comes together, and uh, you know, the actual, the villain, of course, uh, Ramon, uh, emerging as, um, you know, the main villain of the film, and, uh, of course, uh, you know, just uh, playing off against Eastwood, um, but, you know, the kind of, uh, I guess, you know, there is this kind of sense of um, he's on his own, Ramon has his men, and uh, there is that kind of, the way in which, um, you know, there is this perhaps you know cowardly use uh, of his men uh, Ramon and uh, the way in which he still even then you know he does not um, triumph and uh, of course Eastwood you know triumphs and um, you know this epic kind of um, as I say conclusion uh, but not lingering on this uh, just him moving on and, uh, as well there is this kind of loneliness uh, you know to the character and uh, to the world but you know in this this small uh, main town that is kind of um, you know portrayed in the film but you know I guess you know the, the character of uh, the man with no name uh, the way in which he in this entire trilogy, um, just kind of goes in between different places, and uh, he is journeying. Uh, but we never really learn too much about him, and um, I guess there is this kind of uh, sympathy, um, even that can't quite be described uh, for the character and uh, the loneliness and um, the isolated feeling um, of the character. Uh, but you know, he does uh, make these kind of uh, warm connections along the way, and um, that is, of course, you know, even heightened. Uh, you know, as we go through the trilogy, um, you know, I love um, all the side characters in this really, and uh, of course. Ramon, uh, played by Jean uh, Maria Falante, um, you know he is just stunning in this film, and uh, even better in For a Few Dollars More. Um, we'll get to that, you know. But I love, I love the way in which um, you know this film, uh, you know, it's kind of uh, yeah the structure to this film, and it has this perfect um, most for the most part, you know, flow and uh, the tone, uh, you know, it's really almost uh, perfect. And uh, we have uh, just the humour in the film uh, that is uh, played throughout, uh, but you know when it kind of it needs to be, you know, it's serious, and um, you know, of course, and just this. It's really fun film, uh, you know, energetic film, and uh, you know, so kind of entertaining. Uh, you know, the action, of course, and uh, just the conflict uh, and uh, the way in which um, Clint Eastwood uh, is kind of playing off these characters. Um, but you know, it's this kind of um, really kind of uh, rich uh, film as well. The visuals, um, the stunning, uh, just the texture to this. Um, you know, it's very indescribable, uh, really, and um, you know, just the grain, the grit. Um, you know, really. Watching this film, uh, you know, you can kind of sense, uh, you know, you can re it's like you're put in there uh, into the world and the heat and uh, all this kind of stuff and just the kind of air, you know, you can kind of feel it almost. And um, I love uh, the way in which at times, you know, for example, in the jewels, uh, the kind of, you know, the smoke, the dirt is, you know, blowing around and um, just this um, this character emerging and uh, his outfit, you know, it's just perfect. So many things in this film are just masterful and uh, you know, I love the music, of course, uh, one of my favourites and, uh, you know, I listen to do this um, scores all the time, and uh, Morricone is, uh, you know, one of my absolute favourite composers uh, in cinema history, and uh, I think this score here um, is just so perfect. It kind of imbues um, all the different elements, you know, kind of essential to this um, to this narrative, to this world, and uh, the, especially in the character of um, the man with a name. Uh, you know, he is just, you know, he is in this score um, somewhere, and uh, you know, it's just so it's so genius, and um, you know, he has felt throughout, uh, I guess, and his. Um, going through this um, location and uh, playing off these individuals, um, you know, and it is in the score, and, uh, you know, Morricone was a master of this, um, you know, kind of, uh, I guess, imbuing um, part of the narrative, um, the emotions of the characters, the world, um, a particular, particular time uh, and feeling, and, um, you know, nostalgic, whether that be nostalgic or, you know, kind of sadness or, you know, tragedy, and, uh, or, or just, um, you know, heroism, and, uh, I guess, you know, kind of this, this uh, loneliness as well, um, as I say, that's kind of um, in this film, it's all there, it's all in the score, and uh, it's just this score you can listen to um, over and over, you know, how fun it is, you know, just epic and, um, you know, catchy um, kind of, um, you know, the kind of melodic motifs um, that are in this, uh, you know, just so wonderful, and uh, it's just this fascinating uh, way in which um, Morricone and, um, you know, Leone work together um, throughout their films, and, uh, you know, they're just really is something else, uh, one of my favourite kind of composer, um, you know, filmmaker um, collaborations of course, and uh, you know, this 
really made the film. Uh, but yes, that's my kind of that's my thoughts for now. Um, we're kind of um, wrapping up now. Um, I have a few things um, to say, of course, um, going forward about the other films. Uh, much more to say about those. Um, but you know, this film, you know, it's more short. Um, you know, not as much going on, I guess. And um, you know, I, will, uh, I really have many, many things to say uh, about the next entry. And um, you know, it really has grown on me even more. Um, which you know, it's just uh, you know, last time round. Well, uh, I won't kind of say my rating, uh, but it was, you know, it was some rating I gave it. Um, but you know, this time round, even still, um, you know, I just wow, um, I truly adore that film. And uh, yes, this film here, although I do prefer um, the other two in the trilogy, um, this is just stunning. And uh, I think I'll stick with my um, rating um, that I gave it last time round, and that is a ninety-eight percent. Um, you may think that's very very high, and um, it certainly is. Uh, but I think it's justified. Um, you know, it really is. Um, it's not. Too far off being uh, a masterpiece, actually, uh, in its own kind of little way, and um, you know, it really is, as I say, a very special film to me. It kind of um, taught me many things about film, and um, just um, not necessarily following the rules um, in a particular way. Although, really, kind of, you know, um, the visual storytelling, uh, you know, it's all kind of, you know, he knows, um, he only knows how to kind of um, tell a story here and uh, reveal characters, and uh, the blocking here is just masterful. Um, you know, kind of stress that enough and uh, the lighting um you know it's this, this real um throughout the film it's this kind of blend of you know um theatrical and um you know really gritty uh, feeling and uh, it kind of makes this um really authentic um you know kind of harsh uh, opera uh, feeling i guess it's very hard to describe uh, but i guess i'm using different words um but perhaps will attempt to describe uh, how i feel about this film about this trilogy and uh, it's very uh, you know kind of I haven't quite caught on to um, exactly how um, you know he's doing it, but the only is just he's doing it wherever he's doing, it, and uh, you know it works um, perfectly. And uh, you know, just to to kind of um, tell this film uh, visually uh, through the score, and also you know have a very compelling uh, you know kind of um, full of twists uh, kind of plot here. Um, the narrative, um, a really great structure. Um, I think has some slights here and there. Um, you know, just uh, things I've mentioned. Uh, you know, and slight perhaps. A little bit, you know, of a lull um, at one point in the film, uh, but, you know, it picks back up again and uh, really is, for the most part, you know, I have no issues with the film and I absolutely love this film. It is on my favourite films list and, um, you know, as I say, it's not quite a masterpiece for me, um, but it is uh, one that really is very, very special um, to me and, uh, you know, clearly many, many people love this film. Um, you know, it's very acclaimed and uh, initially it was met with, um, you know, I guess, um, you know, as always the case, uh, you know, it's kind of met with um, a lot of um, you know, criticism and, um, you know, of the, of the way the film is made and uh, just um, Eastwood, uh, even, uh, would you believe? And, um, you know, I just think, yeah, just um, all that aside, um, you know, it's, it's definitely a very uh, loved uh, film and uh, you know, it's, just, it's great to see that it has grown, um, all these films, especially uh, for a few dollars more, um, you know, has really grown over the years, um, the stature and, uh, you know, people's affection for this film, uh, you know, it really has, you know, it really has come into its own and uh, it's not just the good, the bad and the ugly, um, but it's this uh, loved um, film now, it really is, you know, it's sort of the entire trilogy and uh, for good reason, uh, because they're all stunning in their own way and, uh, you know, I love all of these films and, uh, you know, it's one of my favourite, um, you know, one of my absolute favourite trilogies uh, in cinema history and uh, this is the very first uh, and it's a very special film. The editing is just, uh, as I say, genius and um, the close-ups, um, you know, it's epic epic showdowns and, uh, you know, it has um, a few action scenes, uh, I guess, you know, kind of um, balanced, uh, you know, across the film and uh, it's not this, you know, full-on action film, uh, but it's this wonderful blend and uh, the action that is there um, really is just stunning and uh, it's so immersive and, um, you know, as I say, the tension uh, that's used in this film and uh, the way the action and um, the set pieces are built up, uh, it's all about the build-up and, uh, you know, the way in which you anticipate, you know, the climax, you know, of these shows, it's just, it's stunning, it really is, and, um, you know, one of the best, um, kind of, um, starts to a trilogy, um, you know, of this, of this kind, and, uh, you know, it really is among my favourite westerns, I guess, and, uh, you know, they only get better, you know, across the trilogy, as I say, and, uh, next up is for a few dollars more, and, um, we'll get to that, and, um, you know, really, really break that film down, you know, I have many, many things to say about that, so, yes, that's my thoughts, um, you know, on this film, and, uh, great to hear, your thoughts uh, in the comments, uh, feel free um, you know, if you want to kind of share your opinions uh, on this film and uh, your experiences, uh, your memories of, of seeing this and uh, yeah, just your opinions on this uh, on, on this film and um, I look forward to um, the other two as well and uh, of course, Once Upon a Time in the West, um, I'll be uh, talking about that uh, at some point as well so 
kind of wait um, before these films, um, you know, sort of watch them again and uh, review them as well. Um, so yes, uh, next up is for a few dollars more, and um, you yeah, can't wait to kind of um, discuss that one. Um, as I say, and I really love that film uh, so much. And um, yeah, I think this film. We'll leave it for now, and not much more to say. Um, you know, on this one, uh, but more to say. Um, you know, I guess on the other two, and uh, they're more. Uh, yeah, just more. Uh, more to talk about. You know, more going on. More kind of depth. Uh, easily more depth to the characters, to the world um, that's been created, and uh, just the. All the elements, you know, the score, um, the set pieces, and uh, just um, the actual, uh, you know, the experiences of those films. Uh, you know, it's just great to see. Um, this is already a grand film, uh, but they get bigger, they get more majestic. Um, you know, in the, as we go through the trilogy, and uh, it's just great. Um, the Yoni um, was a master, and um, it's a pleasure once again um, to go through these films and uh, to tribute, um, you know, this this master uh, of cinema and uh, one of my one of my favourites uh, for sure. And um, yeah, just. Um, what an individual and uh, Morricone and uh, Clint Eastwood um, wow all these uh, individuals uh, everyone involved in this uh, you know just a hats off um, it really is a very very special film and uh, you know it's a unique and uh, you know just a genius way of, of filmmaking uh, I feel personally and uh, you know, nothing like this one and uh, apart from you know the other films in the trilogy and even then uh, this really is a very unique film and uh, you know, it's a really it's its own thing it's uh, just um you know it stands it stands out as uh, you know really unique uh, experience and uh, i love it personally uh, so yes great to hear your thoughts as to say and uh, yeah as always take care and thanks for watching